Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188. Welcome to Gardening with Burke Nursery, the show where we help you grow your garden, increase the curb appeal of your yard, and share information on all plants. I'm your host, Misty Kacharis, the horticulturalist at Burke Nursery and Garden Center. Winter is that time of year when we as gardeners see the changes in our environment. While evergreen trees and shrubs keep their leaves and needles, deciduous trees and shrubs start losing their leaves. The leaves of some of these trees and shrubs turn gorgeous colors of orange or red before they drop off, just giving us an incredible show and letting us know they are going into hibernation so they can rejuvenate and invigorate during the winter months to come back even stronger in the spring. At the same time, some of these trees and shrubs that lose their leaves go through a stage of looking bleak as they strive to recover from fungal infections and symptoms of disease damage. For this reason, the transitional time from fall to winter is when I get the most common question. If my shrubs look so bad now, can I just cut them all back so they'll look better in the spring? The answer depends. And for that reason, I invite you to join me as I answer the question, to prune or not to prune? Years ago, when I first started giving gardening advice, there was one shrub that people asked about consistently when fall and winter months approached. The shrub, the hydrangea. Why? Because after a summer of high humidity, so much moisture, and in some cases, too much afternoon sunlight, the leaves of the hydrangea look black and bleak from fungal infections. You know, today is no different. The most asked about shrub when it comes to pruning is still the hydrangea. And the most important shrub to prune correctly, if to prune at all, is the hydrangea. So let me start with a general overall about hydrangeas. There are three types of hydrangeas. There are the hydrangeas that grow on old wood. There are hydrangeas that grow on new wood. And there are some hydrangeas that actually grow both on old wood and new wood. So what's the difference between the two woods? Well, when we say it grows on old wood, what we mean is that the buds are set about two months after the shrub flowers. One of the best examples actually of old wood blooming is your azalea. And what that means is that the azaleas bloom in the spring and then about two months after they start, stop blooming, but before the 4th of July, that's when you prune the azaleas. If you prune the azaleas any later, then what happens is you're taking off all the buds that they'll be showing you next spring. Now, new wood, a good example actually of new wood is your crepe myrtle. New wood means that in the spring, new branches grow. And as these new branches grow, buds are formed on the new branches. And most of your new growth trees and shrubs actually don't flower until summertime, where most of your new wood trees and shrubs, I'm sorry, excuse me, most of your old wood trees and shrubs actually flower, tend to flower in the spring. So let's talk about hydrangeas, the hydrangea macrophilia. This hydrangea is also known as the big leaf hydrangea. And I have a couple pictures of the hydrangea. The mop head is one where it looks like a ball. 
And if you look at the picture of the mop head, you'll see it's this gorgeous pink flower. Meanwhile, the lace cap, that looks more delicate. And if you look at the picture of the lace cap, you'll see what looks like the florets, the actual flowers are in the center, and then the little petals are on the edge. And that's what makes it a lace cap. A lot of people love these hydrangeas. Why? Because they will either be this incredible blue or they can be pink. And the color is actually determined by the pH of your soil. So if your soil is acidic, at, it has to be at least 6.5 or lower. Then you'll find that the flowers on your hydrangea will be a blue. And the more acidic the soil is, the bluer your hydrangea flowers. Meanwhile, with the pink ones, they like alkaline soil. And they actually prefer a pH as high as 7.0, so that that way they get their pink colors. So one of the things I tell people is when you're planting your hydrangeas, just choose carefully where you plant and what you may want to plant around them when it comes to the macrophilia, the large leaf hydrangeas. The reason is you can't plant a blueberry shrub next to a hydrangea and expect that hydrangea to have pink flowers because blueberries love acid. Meanwhile, the pink flowered hydrangea would not do badly around a boxwood or even another lilac although actually lilacs like sun. And that's, be, that's the other thing with all your hydrangeas, especially living here in Virginia, Northern Virginia. Hydrangeas like morning sun and they like shade or dappled shade in the afternoon. If you give them afternoon sun in our location, they'll fry. Then the other question I get too is if I want that blue color and I'm getting a pale blue or I'm getting almost a pink tone, then how do I change that color? Well, that's where we sell various products that all contain sulfur. And depending on the pH, is the amount that you would apply to your soil. And in the fall is actually when I recommend to apply this to your soil so that it can kind of be there the entire season over the winter months and help change the pH of your soil. In this case, with the sulfur, it would lower your pH. Or, as I said, if you want that pH to be around 7.0, then Lime is the way to go. Lime increases the pH. And that's why a lot of people will also put lime on their lawns because in the Northern Virginia area, we tend to have very acidic lawns. And so with lawns, you want that pH to be 6.2. But let's get back to the actual question here, to prune or not to prune. It is really recommended that you do not prune your mop heads, your lace caps, in other words, the hydrangea macrophilia. The reason is that this hydrangea sets its buds on old wood, and it takes two years for it to set its buds. If you have to plant, one of the foremost experts he is now retired from the University of Georgia, but Dr. Michael Durr, unbelievable uh, expert when it comes to trees and shrubs and especially hydrangeas, his recommendation is that the best and maybe the only time to prune, no joke, is around April Fool's Day. The reason, and I'm talking just about these mop heads and lace caps, the reason is that in spring, you'll be able to see where the actual buds are. 
and then after that you'll know which buds you may want to cut off. And I have had people say, oh, I always take these, uh, these hydrangeas and cut them to the ground and I don't understand why I don't get flowers. It's because you're cutting them to the ground. Now, another hydrangea that also grows on old wood is the oak leaf hydrangea. And if you look at the picture of this hydrangea that I have here, you will see the reason it's called oak leaf, and that's because the leaves look like oak tree leaves. And like oak tree leaves in the fall, the leaves from the oak leaf hydrangea do go into a fall color. A lot of people love that for that reason. And although the flowers start out white with a cone shape, they actually will turn a little pink and they'll turn tan by the time fall comes. And I can't remember if I said this, but the oak leaf hydrangea is actually a native plant where the mop head and the lace cap is not native to the United States. The oak leaf hydrangea is one of the two hydrangeas that is native. If you need to prune the oak leaf hydrangea, and this is one of those that actually will flower throughout the summer months, then you want to make certain that you prune it as soon as it stops flowering so that that way it can start setting up its buds for next year. But again, you're better off if you get hydrangeas that you don't need to prune. Now, I said that there were hydrangeas that were old wood, so that's your oak leaf, that's your macrophilia, the mop heads, lace caps. And then there are two that are what we call new wood. And if you take a look at this next picture, you will see what we call the hydrangea paniculata. This is one of the largest hydrangeas that you will find. And if you want this hydrangea, then make sure you have a lot of room. Its common name is the PG hydrangea. And also, there's also the limelight hydrangea. This baby gets 25 feet tall and can spread almost just as much. The flower heads, actually like the flower head of the oak leaf hydrangea are pyramidal in shape. They are white. So that's the one thing that I found with the uh, Panna Colada, the uh, PG, and the other one that I'll be talking about. You cannot change their colors. It doesn't matter what the pH of the soil is. You're going to have white flowers. Also, the stems are very brittle with this PG. So if you know you're going to have a harsh winter, then what you want to do is maybe prune it back a little bit. The best time to prune any shrub or tree that grows on new wood is actually at the end of February and the beginning of, Mar and the beginning of March, what we like to call late fall or late winter, excuse me. And then finally, another hydrangea that is a native plant. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a picture to show you, but it is known as the arborescence, and it is also known as the smooth leaf hydrangea. In our landscape, it grows only three to six feet tall, but in nature, it can grow 10 feet by 10 feet. Its flowers are like snowballs. They're white and they, they're round and they, they just look like phenomenal snowballs. They're so gorgeous. And again, this is a native plant, as I said, and the most common that you'll find is the Annabelle. Sometimes you'll find the Grandiflora. And by the way, in the other, the PG line, there's also a Grandiflora. So just make sure that you read the label to see whether you're getting the panna colada or whether you're getting the arborescence to determine what the size is. 
And the Annabelle is another one that, because it grows on new wood, you prune it from end of February to the beginning of March before the new growth starts and it sets its buds. And you can prune the Annabelle or the arborescence down to 12 inches if that's what your heart desires. And that will actually help stimulate the growth. And then the final is what we call hydrangea that grows on both old wood and new wood. And the most common name for this hydrangea is the endless summer. So the old wood means that it's setting its buds already in September, October for growth in spring. Then after it grows in spring with that beautiful bud or the beautiful flower, then what happens is you have all this new growth that's going on in spring and a little bit later you'll get some more flowers. And a lot of people think that the uh, endless summer is a macrophilia and it is part macrophilia but it's also part I believe panna colada. So that's why it grows on the old and it grows on the new wood. So when do you prune it? Because I talked about pruning old wood first week of April and then I talked about pruning the new wood in um, Oh, and never, well, we'll come back to that. So pruning the new wood at the end of January, uh, February and beginning of March. So what's recommended is that the most incredible show of flowers that come with the endless summer are the spring blooming, the flowers that bloom on the old wood. So it's recommended that you treat the pruning of this more as an old wood flower, as an old wood hydrangea. So what you want to do is you want to prune it back after the first flowering. Then the next set of flowers will come up and those will be growing on the new wood and never prune an endless summer after the month of August. So that's a little show of when I talk about what you want to do when you're pruning your hydrangeas. So I spent some time explaining about the differences of hydrangeas, the old wood versus the new wood. And one of the things that I didn't mention when you're considering pruning hydrangeas is that if you see any dead branches or what I call dead canes, yes, those can be pruned out at any time. You don't want those left on the hydrangea. And if you want to take flowers and take some cut flowers in, that's fine too. And definitely some people like to dry the flowers of the hydrangeas. And so if you want to do that, definitely cut your hydrangea flowers off in August and you're fine. Now I'd like to talk about pruning in general. And first, let me show you the tools. So the first tool is your pruners themselves, the handheld pruners. And the handheld pruners that you want to purchase are what are called bypass pruners. There are other pruners on the market also known as anvil pruners. The difference is the blade. If you look at the blade of a bypass pruner, you'll see that it's curved. And the blade of an anvil pruner is straight. Anvil pruners are really good if you have some wood that you need to break up. But if you want a nice, good cut with your pruners, then you need the bypass pruners. That's the important. The other piece of equipment that if you're going to be pruning are loppers or lopping shears. And the reason is that 
you can't necessarily reach everything by hand, so you need to be able to get up into the higher levels of the tree or the shrub. And the loppers are also bypass pruners. So again, what that means is that they have that curved blade versus the straight blade. And then another piece of equipment is the saw. And this saw, what I like, it, it closes up, it's small, and then you open it up and you have the blade. And most of these saws that they sell are actually saws that saw in one way, direction only. They don't saw both ways. So when you're sawing on a larger branch, then you need to work this just in one direction versus working it back and forth. And if this raises questions, a great resource for how to prune your trees and shrubs is put out by the Clemson Cooperative Extension Education, and that's Principles and Practices for Pruning Trees. And we have the link here so that you can take a look at that link. Now, let me show you what you're looking at. This here, again, it's not a hydrangea. This technically is a barberry because it's it's lost its leaves for the winter months, and now it has um, the thorns, so you have to be a little careful. But what you're looking at is you're looking at what branches are maybe crossing over each other, being too close, or maybe it's too long. And so what you want to do when you're pruning is you want to make, you want to find it, actually this, this branch from a tree actually is easier to see. So here is a junction point. And so when you're pruning, you want to look for junction points. And then you just take the pruners, put it and, some, and technically, the, I call it a junction point. Sometimes I call it a crotch. But technically, you're looking at what's the collar. And so then you're just pruning right off. And what happens is that you end up, especially using the bypass, you end up with a clean cut. And this clean cut will actually heal itself. Another area again maybe this you may see this easier is the junction point is right here and there's a collar there and so if I want to have the growth go to my left I would prune above if I wanted the growth to go to the right of my hand I would prune this area so let's pretend that I'm looking for shape and I want this branch to go up. So I would then prune down here. And again, because it's a clean cut, then it will heal itself. A lot of people ask when they look at this, they ask whether or not they need to buy something that is known as um, Pruning, oh, well, you know, I don't even recommend it to the point that I can't even remember the name of it. But it's this black substance that's basically a tar that in the olden days we used to say this was important to put on the wound so that the tree or the shrub would heal better. And honestly, that's not the case. That can actually get infection into the tree and shrub. So. There are rare instances where you may need to use it, but not, not necessarily. So we talked about pruning, and we talked about pruning on old wood, talked about pruning on new wood, talked a little bit about how to prune a tree or a shrub. And if you don't know when to prune, 
there is a wonderful resource called a Guide to Successful Pruning Shrub Pruning Calendar put out by the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and I have the link here on the screen. Finally, because again, we're in that transition from fall to winter going into winter, I would like to talk to you about what I remember calling snake oil when this product first came out on the market years ago. And whether it's wilt proof or wilt stop, this is a product that basically has a base that's almost like a polymer. And what you do is you take this product and you spray your evergreen shrubs. And what that means is when it gets really cold outside, the evergreen shrubs won't shrivel up from the cold. It'll actually help them and it'll create less stress for them in the winter months. So this is something that if you know we're gonna have a cold winter, I highly recommend that you take the time to spray your trees and shrubs. Well, pruning is such an important way to maintain the health of your trees and your shrubs. And as the seasons shift from fall to winter, it's true, not all of the trees and shrubs continue to look the best. You know, on the other hand, they need to go through this transition in order to be able to rejuvenate and invigorate. Knowing when and how to prune will definitely provide longer life to your trees and shrubs, as well as improve their growth and flowering. If you have any questions about pruning or any questions regarding gardening or lawn care, contact me at misty at burknursery.com. I'm your host, Misty Kacheris, and I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me here at Gardening with Burke Nursery. I'm looking forward to helping you grow your garden. Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188.